हेलो एवरी वन माइ सेल्फ मिस नमिता गरुडे असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैक्रोबायोलॉजी टुडे आई विल डिस्कस विथ यू बायो रिमीडिएशन सो वॉट इज बायो रिमीडिएशन बायो रिमीडिएशन इज द प्रोसेस इन विच माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर यूज टू रिमूव द कंटेमिनेंट और प्रिवेंट द पोल्यूशन नंबर ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैविंग एबिलिटी टू अपटेक दिस कंटेमिनेंट एज अ एनर्जी सोर्सेस एंड दैट कन्वर्टेड इन टू नॉन टॉक्सिक फॉर्म सो बायो रिमीडिएशन प्रोसेस हैविंग वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ग्लोबली लोकली एंड सोशली सो बायो रिमीडिएशन प्रोसेस कंस्ट्रेन द कंटेमिनेशन साइट एंड प्रिवेंट द एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूशन सेवरल नंबर ऑफ अलगे फंगा एंड बैक्टेरिया आर नोन टू सोल्यूबलाइज ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड डिपोजिट द मेटल्स एंड डिटॉक्सीफाई डाइज एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स केमिकल्स नंबर ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स ऑल्सो हैविंग एबिलिटी टू अपटेक ऑर्गेनिक कंपोनेंट The capacity of microorganisms can be improved by the application of genetically modified microorganisms. So contamination will be in three phases: either solid phase, liquid phase, or slurry phase. So on the basis of phases, bio remediation process varies. On the basis of removal and transportation of waste for treatment, basically there are two methods: one is in situ bio remediation, and another one is ex situ bio remediation. In situ bio remediation, it itself indicates that in that situation, or the treatment is given at the con uh, con contaminant site. So, in situ bio remediation having various advantages. For example, it minimal dis disruption site, it ex uh, minimal exposure to the public and environment, and also low cost. as it having various advantages there are number of disadvantages also so uh, minimal uh, number of microorganisms can be affected by seasonal variations and the process will be slower these are the disadvantages of in situ bio remediation so on the basis of my contaminant there are two types of in situ bio remediation one is intrinsic bio remediation and another one is in situ engineered in situ bio remediation intrinsic bio remediation involves a natural capacity of microorganisms or inherent capacity of microorganism to metabolize the contaminant so inherent capacity of microorganism to metabolize any com com component should be tested in laboratory field as well uh, before using intrinsic bio remediation so there are number of factors of favors the growth of microorganisms for example continuous flow of ground water then um, amendments which uh, gives the or produces acidity okay. intrinsic bio remediation intrinsic bio remediation is a process in which naturally capacity of microorganism to remove the contaminant or inherent capacity of microorganism to metabolize the contaminant inherent capacity of microorganism should be tested before lab uh, intrinsic in by remediation should be tested at laboratory and field trial so intrinsic bio remediation favors the microbial growth through continuous ground flow water and uh, acid buffer uh, buffer acidity production during bio remediation process and also electron transport transport for the micro uh, microbial growth as well as the in situ bio remediation process involves two types one is intrinsic bio remediation and engineered in situ bio remediation intrinsic bio remediation involves the inherent capacity of microorganisms to remove the contaminants from the contamination site so inherent capacity or the natural capacity of microorganism can be tested for the metabolism of contaminant at laboratory level and field level before the intrinsic bio remediation so there are number of sites which favors the growth of microorganism in intrinsic bio remediation one is ground water flow for the year next one is carbonate component for providing acidity continuous buffering acidity and next nutrient availability and electron transport for the growth of microorganism so next one is engineered in situ bio remediation in engineered in situ bio remediation we can manage the parameters for example supply of nutrient as well as addition of 
oxygen can be meant level of oxygen can be maintained in the engineer in situ bioremediation process so the, which could not be maintained in the intrinsic bioremediation process next one is ex situ bioremediation so on the basis of its name ex situ means we have to transport the contaminant from one place to another place we will transport the contaminant uh, at the place where the favorable condition will occur or facilitate the microbial growth that is called as ex situ bioremediation so ex situ bioremediation having several disadvantages related to handling solid amendments for uh, for example transportation scaving a uh, screening then uh, excavation process uh, then fractionation mixing these are uh, loss, uh, cost effective methods so solid amendment or uh, solid phase treatment is one type of the ex situ bioremediation process and another one uh, type is slurry phase treatment solid phase treatment involves the next topic of bioremediation is ex situ bioremediation in ex situ bioremediation we have to transport the contaminant from one place to another place so there are several disadvantages of ex situ bioremediation related to transport first one is handling of solid uh, for example screening then fractionation uh, then mixing these etc these are the disadvantages of ex situ bioremediation solid uh, solid phase treatment solid phase treatment uh, provides the com compost after the bioremediation process which can be used as a solid amendment for next process so today we have studied about the bioremediation process so number of microorganisms having ability to uptake the con toxic component and convert it into non toxic form thank you